It's like 2 a.m. But I just really want to talk about Green Lantern. I got my ring already. I got two copies of the same comic book that once the lighting is right, you can actually see. Pow, pow. I got this green screen behind me that I'm just now realizing that like it might mess up the colors of this because the comics themselves are green. So like, I don't know if that's gonna be an issue. If it is, I'll just like get rid of the king so you can actually see the covers or I'll just put them up like here or like here. Anyway, I want to talk about Green Lantern because I feel like it, because it's a new number one. What can I say? I was super hyped. That's why I got two copies of the same issue. Well, really, I went to the comic book store that's closest to me and they only had this one left. And I was like, man, Ellie, I love Ivan Rice's art. I just kind of like want like, you know, the main cover. First off, new logo, pretty dope. Big fan. Man, I think it's like my favorite logo. It's one of the older types of logos where like the lantern symbol is in the middle, but it's got the, the smooth and the simple sheen of like Jeff Johns era, you know? Speaking of Jeff Johns era, Ivan Rice, who did so much work on Jeff Johns' Green Lantern series. So this one is just like, hits home for me. So anyway, I went to another comic book store and they had this one in stock, they had like 30 and I was like, what the heck? Why is there only one at this other place? The dude said, if you can recite the Green Lantern oath, I've got something cool for you. And I was like, oh man, my wife right here? That's gonna be so embarrassing. And then she said, you literally told me the Green Lantern oath yesterday. And I was like, in brightest day and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil might be wearing my power green lantern's light. And then he said, I would have just given you the ring anyway. So, just embarrassed myself as a, as a nerd in a comic book store. Anyway, I just want to talk a little bit about Green Lantern because I'm a big Green Lantern fan. I haven't followed up on their adventures though for the past few years, unfortunately. The end of Johns' run is kind of where I stopped. I did a little bit of Robert Venditti's Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. But other than that, I haven't been keeping up as much. So I'm a bit in the dark and that's funny. That's like a Green Lantern pun. So in this issue, Hal Jordan returns to Earth and he's like, I'm gonna be here now. This is what I'm doing from now on. And this is like what the third or fourth time he's done that. He's done that so many times. Like in Len Wein, Len Wein, I don't know how to pronounce any of these comic book creators names to be honest. In their run, you know, with Dave Gibbons, Green Lantern, Sector 2814, whatever, he's like, I'm quitting going to space and I'm gonna just stay on Earth. So he did that. And uh, Jeff Johns' run started with him like being like, I'm back, I'm on Earth, everything is cool, everything is awesome. So like this is kind of a return to form for those eras, those classic and well-regarded eras of Green Lantern. And overall, I really enjoyed the issue. It was a lot of fun, fantastic art, a little light on story, but it established the tone super well. And I feel like Jeremy Adams really nails Hal's character, even though I have not read any of his Flash stuff, I've heard good things about it. I mean, the thing with Green Lantern is, and comics in general, it's just so cyclical. So I'm learning to not care so much about the overarching, you know, story of each character, but just appreciate the arcs that they have. Because I feel like DC right now is a lot of, um, whatever you want to be canon is canon. That goes for writers, you know, and readers. Yeah, so the art in this book is done by Zermanico. I think, I don't quite know how to pronounce it, but they do an excellent job of portraying these characters' emotions. But yeah, the art is fantastic. The colors are also super good. They're done by Romulo Fajardo Jr. Forgive my pronunciation again. But the colors are really well done and with Zermanico's line art, there's a lot of energy and emotion in the panel layout, in the faces, in the dial, not the dialogue, that's 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 writer thing. What am I talking about? But just the whole thing was just, it, it's a really, it's a well-made comic that sets up a few things, like why is Sinestro on Earth? What's he doing there? And like, how'd this guy find a Manhunter suit? Which is eerily reminiscent of Jeff Johns' run. Like, the first arc had to deal with the Manhunters, and it might be going in that direction too, so who knows? Now, one of the biggest things that happens in this issue is Hal's costume change. And at the end of Jeffrey Thorne's run, he went back to not his original costume, but like his 70s costume, where instead of like the V, like right down here, it was like all the way down to his crotch, you know? But now it's going back to his OG costume with like the black shoulders, so that's pretty cool. It could be them saying like, hey, this is classic Green Lantern, okay? Like you got like just, his costume is indicative of the tone that we're setting for the story. Or it could just be the artist saying, I just really like this costume and I want to draw it. Either way, big fan. 
Now that being said, there's also a backup story in this issue written by Philip Kennedy Johnson with art by with art by Montos. I do not know this artist, but I'm a bit familiar with Philip Kennedy Johnson's work and big fan. Good stuff, good stuff. It's about Jon Stewart. And I was honestly so confused reading it. I was like, why? Cause it, so it shows Jon being like, being on earth. And he's just enjoying his time. He's like, hey mom, I'm here. Let's, let's, let's just have some fun. Like I'm not a Green Lantern anymore. Let me just help you out with stuff. I'm, taking it easy and then it goes to another universe slash a different time with like an alternate version of Guy Gardner and the Green Lantern Corps are just completely destroyed and I was like what the heck is going on turns out it's actually connected to Philip Kennedy Johnson's Dark Crisis World Without a Justice League Green Lantern and I didn't read that so I had to do some quick research on what the heck was going on there and it makes a bit more sense but just so you know, if you if you are in this for the Jon Stewart backup, then you're probably gonna wanna pick up Dark Crisis, Worlds Without a Justice League, Green Lantern. Otherwise, you'll be super lost like I was. But the concept is cool, and I like the designs of the new core members and everything. So really, Jeremy Adams' first issue of Green Lantern is going back to basics, going back to a time in which Green Lantern was the shiz. When Jeff Johns was writing, it's very indicative no, what's the word? It's very similar in tone and attitude and a similar voice to that of Johns' run. And I think that Adams completely nails Hal's character. Carol, though, apparently she has a fiance that we're meeting next issue. So, don't know where that's gonna go. Man, I just like Green Lantern. I really just wanted to try this green screen, to be honest, and just see if it would even work. I know the lighting is terrible, so the green screen might look absolutely garbage, but you know what, I'm just trying to have fun. Moving to a new place, hoping to make some more videos and just be fun, you know? So yeah, Green Lantern number one. Good stuff. I'm really enjoying it so far. And uh, put it on your pull list. Like, make sure you let your comic book store know that you want it so that they like keep printing it and they don't like cancel this series or whatever. Because Green Lantern is a hard character to sell as of recent years. So like, you know, hopefully this can be a big comeback reminiscent of like 20 years ago, you know? If I'm being honest though, Kyle Rayner is actually my favorite Green Lantern and I'm really sad that he hasn't had his own series in a while. But he's showing up in Unstoppable Doom Patrol number three, so I'm probably gonna pick that up just to see Kyle and Guy together again, like their Green Lantern core days doing their thing. So keep an eye out for that one too, you Lantern fans out there, you Lantern maniacs, Lantern fanaterns, fanatic. I was trying to do like a fanatics and lanterns thing, but it didn't quite work out. That's it. That's the video. Thanks for watching. Read Green Lantern. He's dope. And yeah, thanks for watching.